And first up is me using tech to take on one of the most macho men I know. For my challenge, I was pitted against former US Army Special Forces veteran and all-round hard man Mike Hawk. This was going to be a survival challenge where we would both be marooned on an island on a lake in Derbyshire for an unspecified amount of time until we received a signal to say we could leave. Now, this is going to be a serious survival test. Neither Mike nor myself are allowed to take any food or fluids onto the island and we're not allowed to drink unpurified water from the lake. We are, however, allowed to take any pocket gadget, uh, which is great for me because, as you can see, I've got enough small stuff to fit in my pockets. Mike, however, is, is crazy enough to go without. Dude, why would uh, you do something like that? I got everything I need right here, my man. Yeah? So, if I managed to match Mike's skills in a series of survival tests, then I would win the challenge. If I failed in any one of the tests, then Mike would win. But could a city boy like me stand a chance against Mike's years of experience? Let's go. This is crazy. As we headed out to the island, I was feeling confident, but that confidence was short-lived when our boat stopped short of land. Come on, Otis. Really? Oh! Things had suddenly gotten serious. I think my legs uh. have given up, dude. Oh. Oh. We were now both soaking wet, and with a bitter wind blowing across the lake, our core temperatures were dropping fast. I can already feel the cold now starting to creep into my legs. So we both quickly left the beach and headed for the shelter of the trees. Open spot, this is where I'll go. I reckon I'm gonna set up here. Even out of the wind, I was really feeling the cold. Fingers are numbing up. So I decided my number one priority was fire. Okay, so this is a blast match. So rather than just trying to get one or two sparks going and hoping that they catch, this should set up loads of sparks at once, increasing my chances of starting a fire. Combined with a block of high-tech wet fire tinder that burns even when wet, my gadget should make lighting a fire child's play. Child's play. Child's play. Come on. You got a fire going there yet, Mike? Negatory, I'm waiting on you. I want you to feel good. <laughs> this fire-making game is tough, except when you're an expert. Now, what I have here is basically good old-fashioned flint and steel. Then, it seems one spark is enough. Next order of business, shelter. I just need a tinder to catch. But finally, my tech did its job. Yes! <laughs> yes! I have flames! Whoa! What do I do now? Now I needed logs, and I'd brought just the gadget, a pocket chainsaw. Oh, this is amazing! With the fire roaring, I decided to get out of my wet clothes. Oh, cold, 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 cold. Ah, that does not feel good getting back on. Oh, no. Pants are wet. Fortunately, I'd thought ahead and brought my space blanket to keep my bits warm while my pants dried. If it's good enough for David Beckham, it's good enough for me. OK, so my camp wasn't quite as sorted as Mike's, but I didn't have to rely on bin bags because my tech was awesome. I've actually been quite impressed by this jacket. It's from Ida and he's doing very well at keeping the wind away and I do actually still feel very warm. OK, so the next thing we got to focus on is water. Finding safe drinking water is always a priority in a survival situation. Instant pot. Mike, once again, was doing it old school. One minute at a full rolling boil will always make it safe. Where I was using a gadget developed in conjunction with the American military. You pour a thimble full of water over salt crystals, shake it, and then zap it with an electrical charge. See the water fizz in? You then add this charged solution to the water you want to purify. And that, I'm told, is it. The big advantage of this system is that one tiny thimbleful can purify up to four litres of water. The downside is you have to wait four hours before you can drink it. How's it going over here? <laughs> <laughs> what in the heck you got on? Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, a survival sarong. Nice, yeah. I yeah. like that. The yeah. survival sarong, yeah. man, sweet. But anyway, uh, I'm on my second batch of purified water here if you're thirsty and you want to drink. Yeah, mine's going to take about four hours. <laughs> uh, Taste some of that. 
You know, I'd, I'd rather... Just taste it. It don't look pretty, but taste it. That's foul. Are you kidding me? It's foul, dude. Well, that's better than anything I ever seen come out of France. <laughs> Things were looking up. I had water on the way, and my trousers were dry enough to put back on. That feels good. So now our thoughts turn to food. And because we were on an island, fishing was the obvious choice. Mike had gone all caveman with sticks and feathers and stuff, where I had a more sophisticated plan. Check this out. You think it's a giant pen, but no, this is actually my fishing rod. Look. OK, so it's not the biggest of rods, but I did have a piece of killer tech to help. It's an Echofish 300, and it works off sonar. Look, there's loads of them. This thing is brilliant. But it was one thing detecting fish, Catching them was another. I do really want to win this challenge. I did all right, lighting the fire, managed to get my clothes dry. I'd, I'd say we're pretty much neck and neck right now. If I could just land a nice, juicy fish, or even a little tiddler, and him get nothing, I'd be very happy. And it wasn't long before I was picking up prey. I think I've got a fish. If I've got a fish, that's just stupid. If I've, if I've got a fish... Oh, yeah. <laughs> no! As the afternoon turned into early evening, I started to realise one of the biggest challenges to survival is the boredom. Otis? Yeah? There's a fella off to your left flank, flashing a light at us. Oh, yeah! That looks like he's sending Morse code. Oh, Morse code! Now I have just the thing for decoding such messages. You can read Morse code, can't you? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Send name. Send name? Well, at least I didn't have to translate it, but I can send it using this Morse code app on my smartphone. This handy app allows you to type in text and flash out Morse. Look, spelling my name and then saying, send help. Mike used a battery, a bulb, and his brains to respond. We both got the same reply. What must we, it must be come home. Come on! Come on! Finally, we've been given permission to get off this island. Mike took down his shelter and used the bin bags for floats. For my escape, I got a diver's pocket survival raft. It's designed to be inflated by compressed gas, which I didn't have. But nothing was going to stop me getting off this rock and returning home. Here we go. I'd been really pleased with the way today had gone. I'd taken Mike on at his own game and matched his every move, which meant I'd won the challenge. And I think I proved that with the right tech, you can do anything.